Look at that funny looking frog. He looks how I feel sometimes on my tabletop reviews. Goofy, kind of bug-eyed, unsure of myself. Thousand takes to get it right. Man, sometimes it is a nightmare. Look in the upper right. There's an insight to the making of a nothing fancy tabletop review. It's on the Keltec Sub 2000 on Vera Alliance's page. Embarrassing. I'm going to leave it out there, though, if you're interested and, like, really bored. You can check it out. Yeah, I, I feel like this frog sometimes. By the way, we are looking inside the 2011 Spyderco catalog. Just outstanding execution, by the way, on this catalog. We're going to jump inside, do a little bit of reference here in just a second. There's the cover. But first, I want to show you a mini collection that is just rocking. Check that. Beautiful. Spyderco Rookie VG10 Steel. It's not full full flat ground, but man, it's a tiny little, just perfectly balanced EDC blade. There's midside, so this is Baby Bear. Here comes Mama Bear Delica G10 FFG VG10 Steel. Oh man, I, I don't know if I've reviewed this one. I think I showed it, but I need to knock out a separate. It's that special. Speaking of special, there's Daddy Bear. Reviewed, highly recommended in the Nut and Fancy Project. 10 out of 10 on the likability scale, ranking as a Hall of Famer here in TMP Knife Show in YouTube. Dudes, love the Endura 4 G10. There's nothing I don't like about it. I said as much in my review. It's a hard use, full flat ground VG10 tactical folder. Very thin, easy to carry. Great pocket clip, blah, blah, blah. All the stuff I talked about, a little bit pricey. About $110, $105, depending where you go, while you can get it, if you can get it. That's the Endura 4 G10. Say hello to a much more affordable, also Spyderco offering, Kara Kara in G10. Finally getting around to reviewing this. These guys are basically the same knife. And you can score the Kara Kara G10 for less than one third the price. Oh man, that is awesome value. This is such a beautifully executed blade. And in a lot of ways, I'm talking the Kara Kara G10 here. It makes up all, not all, just a few of the criticisms I had on the Zytel handled version. I reviewed that like eons ago, 2008, 2009, whenever it was. It's still out there. Still a wonderful blade. I like it. I didn't really dig the handle so much though. Not so much. We'll get into the handle specifics. And there's some other things too. The blade grind. Minor things. I think for the money, it's just a fabulous knife. But in every way, this model is an improvement over that Zytel Kara Kara. Another home run. I'll tell you right now, 10 out of 10 on my likability scale. Another Hall of Famer. Proudly standing side by side with the Endura 4 G10. Jumping into the specifics. Philosophy of use on both blades. In my estimation, your mileage may vary, as I've said for years, is that it is a very slimline, hard-use tactical folding knife. To me, it's a defensive blade that I carry as a last resort emergency defensive tool. Okay, that is made possible by a very slim carry size. Uh, I shouldn't say size, but width. And the weight is a very reasonable 4.2 ounces. The Endura in the background is 4.4 ounces, so the weights are pretty much identical. That is a great tactical blade right there, and it's so slim. I've been carrying the Kara Kara off and on for the last six months, and I love it. It's just a great blade. You might EDC the blade, philosophy of use. A little bit on the large side size. I'd go for Mama Bear. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I like how that sounded. <laughs> <laughs> Let me say, I would carry this knife, go for Mama Bear. Maybe I would if she's hot. I don't know. You know, whatever euphemism. Are the Delica 4, you know, the you know, the regular handled version. I've been eating, This is my mountain knife right here. That's why I put the orange lanyard on it. This is more EDCable to me. I speak and, and see a lot of comments from TMP or Zoe, however, that EDC this life size. Okay, get it. Collectability, eh. On the Bird series, and if you don't know, the Bird is the affordable line of Spider Co. I think I have a bookmark here in the catalog somewhere. Here we go. So here we go. That's uh, Bravo Yankee 03 Golf is the call number. Kara Kara, Kara, Kara 2 actually in G10. That's also an awesome knife. The Metal Arc. 
to G10. I think that that's basically a Delica. That would be, for me, and what I like them for, probably a better EDC choice. Collectability, not so much. I definitely would, and when I'm talking collectability, I'll go where I always go. Not necessarily increasing in value, but that it's just special to you and you enjoy it. Okay, so I think maybe the Enduras, Delicas, the Rookies, the other special editions by Spyderco, top of the line blades with VG10 steel, maybe a little bit more special collectible. I don't know. That's where I see it. Steel blade shape. It's that beautiful full flat ground, in this case, 8CR13 MOV. That's a pretty proven blade steel in a lot of high value. Yes, overseas produced blades. Talked about it lots. Not perfect. No knife steel is perfect. Um, it will rust out on you if you're not careful. I think in a review, what was it? I just did <laughs> so many reviews, I don't remember. But I was showing you a uh, Kershaw in HCR13 MOV, uh, and it had a little bit of rust on the edge. So take care of it, keep it oiled, you know, and it'll do just fine. One thing I love about HCR13 MOV is the very fine edge that it can take, and it holds it pretty good. So it's a decent Chinese steel, like it. And check out the relief edge on this, by the way, guys. Man, is it slamming. It is a gradual relief edge. It has that actually over the Endura G10. And this is the kind of relief edge I wish every knife company would do. But nothing fancy, I like a steep relief edge. It wears better. Eh, I don't find that to be the case. Sorry. Not with a medium to high quality steel for what I do. I mean, I'm not hacking wood with these blades. These are just, you know... Maybe food preparation. I forgot to mention that in philosophy of use. Doing that kind of stuff. And so I much prefer this one. Razor sharp out of box. Hair shaving sharp out of box. The Kara Kara 2G10. Just fantastic. Edge uh, out of the box. Great job, Spider Co. I mean, slamming. And that was one of the critiques. Not that, but that was a, a critique I had of the Zytel handled Kara Kara. Is I, I didn't like the blade grind. I thought it was a little bit abrupt. And I really called for an FFG model. And here it is. Excellent. This is exactly what I want. Just like the Endura 4. Slice as well. Dice as well. Oh, man. Good belly. Great penetration on the tip. And that tip is not overly delicate. Good balance between precision cutting, detail work with the Kara Kara G10. Nothing I don't like about the blade. Nothing. It's got that deployment hole. I mean, that's kind of an aesthetic throw to, uh, or bow, I should say, to the bird line. You know, it's <laughs> stupid sound effect, bird. Uh, I prefer the standard spidey hole. I think most guys do, but I sure can, t sure can take it. And I'm not missing the bird-like feathers, the feathered pattern of the Zytel handle. Uh, not so much. So about the only thing we have thematically for bird is the eye deployment hole, which is fine. Very functional. Great job on the blade. Strong, sharp, outstanding speed. This is a lock back knife, fellas. Okay? It's not a liner lock. It's not assisted opening. But I'll tell you what, as far as a lock back goes, this thing is perfectly balanced. And by that I mean the lock bar is not overly stiff, like we've seen in some others I've reviewed on the table, which makes that type of deployment that I did right there tougher to do. Okay, now can you, you know, fold it with one hand as easily as you can a liner lock? Eh, maybe not. To do it safely, I recommend using two hands. Definitely you could fold it against something, get your fingers out of the way and do it there. I've been doing that ever since I was like three. <laughs> okay, not three, seven. Yeah, I go back a ways with blades. But the speed is phenomenal. For a lock back, balanced and smooth. I mean, this a sample of one. Uh, I shouldn't say sample of one. I've handled several... Kara Kara 2s, G10s, and they've all been smooth and fast. Lock up, very solid. No side to side, no up and down. If there was some side to side, you could eliminate some play right there. Just fantastic speed. I love this knife. Strength is excellent. I'm going to classify it as a hard use knife in the reality of a tactical folder. In other words, we're not really going to go batoning wood with it. It's not a survival blade. It is a blade that will, if you use it the way it's intended to be used, used won't fold on your fingers okay it's got the david boy detent there i guess that's what that's called uh, i've never grasped a knife so tightly that i actually actuate that lock back never even without the detent but it's there whatevs strong uh you know is it as strong as maybe a cold steel triad lock eh no i wouldn't say so because 
the, the stresses are going to be transmitted directly to the lock bar right here, as you can see. Okay, there's no intermediary uh, mechanics there to take that stress. So if you are transmitting a lot of shock to that blade, it's going to come to lock bar. Eh, be careful. I, st I think, though, for re realistic purposes, plenty strong handle material. Told you I'm not missing those feathers at all. Love the G10. Medium traction, overseas produced G10, I take it. Radius dwell, check that out. Let's compare it against Endura 4, why don't we? Because these are these knives are in competition with each other. They really are. In a lot of ways, actually, I think of these two blades. Car guys, you're going to dig this. Kind of like the Porsche 911 versus the Porsche Cayman. The Cayman's a very capable car. It rips. I mean, the 2011, I don't know if it's 2012 out yet. The Cayman R. It cooks at 0 to 64.7 seconds, 66,000 retail. And then you have the Carrera 4S, 385 horse, 0 to 64.5, around 100,000. So they're basically the same performance levels. Actually, in some ways, the cheaper version in the Porsche outperforms the more expensive version. Don't know if Porsche intended that. Maybe we kind of got that going on here. I'm just saying. Cool factors here. I'm going to say that and stick with that. But as far as capabilities, oh man, this Caracara is pretty slamming. Don't get me wrong, I still love my Endura. It's going nowhere. Look at the handle. We're talking about the G10. Good radius scene. It's not squared, so it's not ergonomic. Here's another thing they did absolutely awesome on this. And I've been harping on this since 2008. And there's been progress made, I'll tell you. Are they watching it in fancy videos? Don't know. But they are doing what I've been advocating. That is aggressive milling of any steel liners. That is about as milled out as you could possibly ask for, courtesy, courtesy uh, lighting courtesy of the Prion 2, 4.7s. Check it. Milled out. That's why it weighs only 4.2 ounces. You know, if it wasn't milled out, it would add that much weight. No, maybe half an ounce, maybe a third of an ounce. But I like paring it down whenever I can. There's also some milling out on the steel backspacer bar right here. Aesthetic, maybe a very, very slight amount of weight. Handles excellent. You can take it apart if you need to. Mini torques right there. Just like you can the Endura 4. Man, I love that handle. How about traction-wise between these two? Which one has more traction than fancy? This one does. This is a higher quality G10. I would expect that. It's a more upscale blade. Not sure the sourcing on this Sage Color G10. This has a little bit less traction. Does it really, really matter? Mm, I would say for most folks, probably not. Probably not. Great job on the handle, though. Look how similar they are, by the way, in shape. Very similar. A little bit, you know, there's some sculpting differences between the Endura 4, Caracara 2 G10, ergonomics. It just keeps getting better, guys. I mean, this is why I said right out, I'm so confident. It's rarely I will say on video what my likability scale is unless it is just absolutely squared away. And then I'll put it in recording on the video because I know it's not going to change. Look at the jimping. Yeah, you know I was going there. Had to go there. Jimping is important. Great thumb ramp, and it's jimped top. Very sharp jimping on the Caracara 2 G10. And on the bottom... Remember that whole analogy between the Carrera and Cayman? You don't see that on the Endura 4 G10, do you? I'm talking the bottom choil where it's jimped, it lacks it. So you can choke up on the Caracara and really get some detail work done, whatever you're doing with a blade, choking up on it. And that is excellent jimping, dudes, right there. I mean, it's perfection. Yeah, the ergonomics, because of the jimping, slam dunk. The handle, I said, doesn't have any sharp edges in the hand. Reverse and forward grips are excellent for the Caracara 2 G10. Ergonomics, ergonomics are just fabulous. I didn't know if I showed you the finish and close view right there. Standard Spyderco finish. I engraved this one. Steel isn't overly hard. I mean, I always do that to mark the blade and then also test its hardness. hardness. Uh, it took the engraving quite well, actually. Made in China! If you don't like it, there's lots of U.S. knives I've reviewed here. You can go check out my playlist. Okay, ergonomics squared away. Clip design keeps getting better. It's basically like the Endura. All the Enduras. I mean, they're, and the Delicas for that matter, they're four-way positionable, right? All four corners, tip up, tip down, your lefty, your righty. This is a great ambidextrous high-value knife. Lefties, if you're looking for a blade, you don't want to spend a lot of money, 
bam, there it is, Care Care 2 G10. Position it however you want. If you're like me, you're going to carry tip up. That way as it comes out of pocket, ready for actuation immediately. Not pocket deployable like a waved knife, but, you know, that's not a big deal to me. Uh, the clip. On this model, carried a little bit loose, so I detached it and bent it so I had more tension under it. This is where I'm at now. Oh, way, way tight now. Easy to do, not a big deal. And actually, it has more tension than the Endura 4 does. You see, I can lift that one kind of readily. You know, is that a thicker stock? I don't know. They seem pretty similar. The, design, the designs between the pocket clips are pretty similar. I wish this one was blackened like the Endura 4. However, I can blacken that easily. I mean, I can just dirt coat it if I have to. No big deal. There's your lanyard hole in the handle, by the way. We should carry it a little bit deeper. Okay, it's basically where it's always been in the Enduro series. It's a little bit down. You're going to have a little bit sticking out of the pocket. Not a super deep carrying knife. Um, great job in the clip, though. And no Wizard of Oz goofiness issues. Always be careful when your clip's sticking out of your pocket. You're walking by your cars, guys. Man, I have scratched vehicles. My vehicles, uh, bad doing that. I think a few others have as well. Value. This is where it just gets so exciting. At least for me personally. That's because you can score this Kara Kara 2 G10 model for around $28. $28? dollars $28 for this knife? For everything I'm showing you? That is sick. $105? I love this knife. The steel difference is a lot of the cost. Understand that. Chinese 8CR13 MOV VG10. Don't get me started on how awesome VG10 steel is. So I don't want guys to say, whoa, that's a better knife. In some ways it is, but the steel, the VG10 steel, superior to this one. Let's just keep it real. It is very rust resistant. I've shown you in snow on backpacking trips how VG10 steel overnight does not even rust. Keeps its edge. No, it's not a miraculous steel, but it's probably one of my favorite medium to upper end steels around that won't break the bank. Value smoking. Let me show you some alternatives. If you're going to spend $28, what else could you get for your money? A lot of TMPers just love it when I do this. This is just coming out of the nothing fancy knife drawer. How about the Ontario Rat 1? There's one in plain satin, plain edge. Here's a prototype coated. This is my first special edition Ontario Rat 1. That's an OS 8 steel. The Rat 1 is 4.8 ounces. It's a little bit heavier, OS 8 steel. Full flat ground, an awesome knife. Nothing I can say bad about it. Maybe this one design might be a little bit stronger because it's a liner lock. Although I did do my stabbing protocol with an Ontario Rat 1 and it passed with absolute flying colors. Price on these nowadays, $25 to $30. <laughs> Price on these these days, $25 to $30. Totally worth it, the Ontario Rat 1. Good alternative. Different blade shape, full fat ground, you know, maybe not as precise a tip, if you will. How about this one, man? Haven't seen this in a while, have you? Kershaw Tremor. Oh, man, the Tremor is so sick. 1950 is this model. Six ounces, though. Kind of dominates the Kara Kara in terms of size. For guys who said, yeah, I don't mind UDC in a big blade. Yeah, UDC a Tremor. Sick. Un, uh, well, slightly gem, not gem, but milled steel liners on the trimmer. Price is just amazing. $26 on this in most places. Maybe a little more, a little less. Great alternative to this. Not full flat ground. And this is assisted opening too. Thicker too. Heavier. It's an alternative. It's in the ballpark for cost, right? Just showing you a few alternatives. How about the Kershaw Clash? Haven't shown you that one on the TMP camera before. 4.6 ounces, model 1605. This is a plain edge satin, about $24. Can't lie to you, I would pick the Kara Kara G10, you know, all the way over that knife. All the way. It's not even a competition. Not even close. Just love everything about that full flat ground, longer blade. Eh, not that this is a bad blade, but mainly it's a grind problem and it's a thickness problem in the carry of the knife. And look at that goofy clip. <laughs> That's Wizard of Oz. I'm just saying. What else we got here? Oh, yeah. Don't forget CRKT Suma. This is model 1165 plain edge in satin. $28 HCR 14 MOV. Basically the same steel. Super, super light. I forget the weight offhand, but it's like 
I don't know, sub four ounces. It's amazingly light, like 3.2, 3.4 ounces. Love this knife. Hollow ground though, it's not FFG. Need to be sharpened out of box, at least for my liking. This is a flipper design, okay. Comes out fast, beautiful knife. Unfortunately, because of the design, the aesthetics, which I said in my review, you know, tip down. That's a good option. How about this one? You guys are going to dig this one. How about the Buck? Oh, man, that's a good knife. Buck Vantage Force 3642. Hey, wait a minute. What is that doing in this review? <laughs> I just threw that in there for laughs, dudes. This is totally not in the same price range. This is around $75. S30 V steel. I'm just throwing it in there to freak your mind cone. Beautiful knife though. I need to review that knife. Look at that. How beautiful that is. S30 V blade steel. That's like upper end. So yeah, it's you could buy two of these for one of those. Still, that's not a decent price for S30 V. There you go. Couple couple ones. I got some more on the table, but I'm running out of time. Value is smoking. Smoking for the Caracara 2 G10. Cool factor. Not so smoking. It isn't. It's main actually China, guys. So, I mean, how cool is that? ACR 13 MOV. Nothing special about that. It is a working blade. Just like it's the littler brother, the Meadow Lark right here. I need to get one of those. I need to get like three of those. I love them. These knives are so freaking squared away. I just don't even know what to say. I, don't, I guess I do know what to say. We're 21 minutes in it. Look at that. Totally fits in the catalog. That's a great way to end the review. That is a Caracara 2 G10. There's nothing I don't like about the blade. Yes, it's overseas produced, produced, but if you want it USA produced, it's going to be around $50, $60, maybe even more. That is a net and fancy review. This is a Hall of Fame knife. It's easily make it into my best knives under $40 playlist and also some others too. You'll see it there. Thanks, guys, so much for taking the time to watch this review and your support. You rock.